Welcome, everybody, to the Lunch Table Podcast, the podcast that covers all your favorite movies and TV shows. I'm Dylan, and I'm joined by my incredible co-host, Akram, for our review of episode one of She-Hulk, now on Disney+. Uh, so, Akram, I know you just watched the first episode. Um, I want to know your fresh takes on the show. Yes, she, Dylan. I, uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I think it, it's not a very, like, impactful show yet, at least. It's a very, like, just casual kind of show that you just sit down and watch. It kind of reminds me of, like, the early 2000s, like, sitcoms a little bit um, with the MCU flair. I thought it was pretty good, and I think they're heading towards a direction where um, their content may start getting a little bit more mature. There were some elements in this episode, and, and there's no problem with that. It's just, like, a cool thing to, like, mention. Um, but without further ado, tell us your thoughts. Oh uh, yeah, I agree. Um, it has kind of like a like a sitcomy comedic flair. Um, there, I mean, everybody's like an adult in the show, so it's not gonna be like like Miss Marvel kind of like that kind of like teenage coming of age flair. It's gonna be like a more mature show. So it might it might have like you know a few moments where you know they have like adult themes, and and in this episode too, they kind of on touch on like I know feminist issues too. Um. But it was a fun episode overall. I didn't mind it. Um, did it blow me away? Not really, but it's the first episode, so I didn't have like huge expectations for it. Um, it kind of sets up, um, you know, Jennifer Walter's origins, which is kind of similar from the comics, because in the comics, um, I think she was like shot by like a gangster, and then uh, like Bruce had to like donate her blood. So it's kind of similar in in this episode. Like they had an accident, and the only way Bruce could save her was like he had to give her uh, his his gamma radiation blood um but it's it's similar like seeing like how they have like like different quirks like how they handle like their powers like like she has so much more control um whereas bruce like he had to like you know he had to work 15 years just to get where he's at now but they could i did like that they explained like um so so, uh, apparently like her blood fixed his arm uh so i'm wondering if that was uh like before shang chi like the end of the, the end credits um because he had like this prototype thing too like he showed like that can control his like human form too so what do you think of that i well i yeah i don't know the timeline actually i think the, the directors like showed where it takes place yeah i think this might take place you know i think this takes place after shang chi chronologically speaking i think i mean he could have had sense. the device during shang chi and device, that could explain right. why he he was like humanish I, I tell you, I'm not a big fan of, like, Bruce, like, now he has no choice but to be this Hulk. Like, he can't, he has to have a device to, like, to like I, it kind of takes the magic out of, like, that werewolf aspect or, or something. Like, he's on a thin line. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of people had time to digest this smart Hulk. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed uh, these little callbacks, especially with um, Steve Rogers. I think that's really funny. Um, I, you know, Tony Stark, uh, really sad. Um, I think Tatiana Mas- Maslany also does a great job. Like she's such a phenomenal, phenomenal actress. Um, Orphan Black. Um, she was in a movie with Jake Gyllenhaal as well. She, she phenomenal. Um, I, I bet with you, she's going to have so much range in this show. And I think it's gonna be really cool, uh, to see her journey unfold. Um, you know, she doesn't want to be the superhero, but she's going to have like no choice but to be. I think that's going to be really cool to see. Another aspect of the MCU I like is like the fact that they keep having these uh, tug and pulls of emotions and, and different story threads. Um, but yeah, I wanted to know your thoughts on the whole island thing, because that's where we spent most of our time is showing her training, because um, there was not too much happening in the show. But uh, I just wanted to know. It's like a nice little montage. Um, what it, were your it was on it was fun. I mean, I enjoy. I feel like this whole first episode we saw just from the trailers. So I feel right. like I I saw everything. You know, I kind of wish that. That's why sometimes I wish Disney would like hold back on trailers sometimes because I kind of want to, you know, I just want like a tease. And then when I actually watch the episode, I'm I'm not. I want to be like surprised. You know, I don't want to be like like everything laid out. So this episode, like, felt like that's why I felt like I wasn't too like blown away just because I feel like I saw everything from the trailers. But it was fun. I mean, it was cool. Like we get to see like you know, Bruce's private life, like, you know, where he was. And it makes sense because, you know, he was um, during that time after Infinity War, that five year gap, I guess we got to see like where he was, you know, trying to like, I guess, uh, do that therapy training for himself. So it was cool. And and it is kind of like an homage to like 
uh, some of the older Avengers too. Like we saw, like we, uh, they were talking about like Steve, um, I'm about to say Steve Jobs, Steve Rob <laughs> Rogers. Um, but it was cool also because we got to see like that that cool bunker that that Tony built. It, it, this whole episode made me miss like like <laughs> Tony Stark so much, especially like when they carve like the TS and the BB in the bar. I thought that was fun too. I was just like thinking of like. Like he, like Tony's just having a drink with like this huge Hulk at the bar, and they're just like uh, two bros having like a chat. Maybe they start a podcast or something. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah, but it, it was fun. Yeah, but um, I know you have some uh, predictions, especially with the uh, the Sakaran uh, ship that we saw, yeah. uh, from Thor Ragnarok. So tell me, what do you think uh, we'll see for episode two? Well, for episode two, I've heard like a, a I seen a review tweet thread somebody was saying that episode two is still trying to get people on board um i think we're gonna see a lot more of like because she's she represents like superhumans i believe in the comics later on especially because she's she hulk uh i think we're gonna get a lot more of that i don't know if we're gonna see more of bruce banner um i think the sakar or, or yeah sakarian right the sakarian ship we're gonna get more info on that a little bit later not right now i think it, we're gonna see a lot more of like her friends trying to like tell her to do cool stuff and and blah 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 and and perhaps we're gonna see daredevil i think we're gonna, we might see daredevil a little bit further down because this this show uh will have nine episodes so uh, plenty of time i guess what do you think will happen uh yeah i i agree with that um i definitely feel like daredevil might they might hold off because it's that's such a huge review and that's another thing like like disney like showed off so much i kind of wanted to be surprised a little bit with that too so i don't think they would probably put him that early although disney plus does have like a tendency sometimes to give things away like like obi-wan when they show like vader like in the first episode right. um so maybe daredevil i don't know i don't know i think they're gonna hold off on that for a little bit um because i kind of have to flesh this character out first before you know they they gave us the, the goodies um yeah, I wonder if we'll actually see a Doc Samson in the show because uh Ooh. he wasn't credited. There weren't like any actors I saw like in the cast list. Um, so maybe because he is part of like the you know the Hulk like family, I right. guess you could say. Um, because he he's kind of like the psychiatrist. Maybe he helps um you know Jennifer get through this. Um, I don't know if we'll see Bruce again. Maybe possibly toward the end, or maybe like it's like. He's just, just like calling him <laughs> just for like pointers or stuff. But I think for the most part, I think they're just going to focus on and Jen and uh, really show that this is her show and that it's not flooded with all these like different cameos. But we see like Abomination too in the show and Wong. So we're definitely going to get those characters. So I, I hope it doesn't become too distracting uh, or maybe, it, you know, maybe it's it's well balanced. But um, how would you any other thoughts for this episode and how would you rate this show? Or this yeah, episode? I think I would rate it. Um... Yeah, I think I would rate it at eight. Um, it did like you were. I, I know your thoughts already, but it, it it's just one of those shows where you could just chill out. At least for the first episode, I bet with you it's gonna it's it's gonna be a lot more wild uh, later on. But I think it the other shows that that were previously released kind of like captured me more. Whereas this was like very fun, and maybe that's a selling point. Maybe it's just like that fun show. Um, that's how it captures you. Not so much the MCU aspect. So I give it an eight. What do you give it? Um, I'll 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 stand with that. I'll give it an A as well. It like I said, it didn't totally blow me away, but I think it was a good starting point for this show. Um, and I was surprised too, because like sometimes Disney like gives you like the first like two or three episodes. So and this was a really short episode too. I was surprised. Yeah. Um, but I'll I'm fine. I mean, nine episodes. That's that's enough time for me to you know see where this character journey goes. So. Um, yeah, I give it an eight for this episode. I mean, there were like a few like corny moments, <laughs> like when she was fighting that villain at the end, like you saw, like she was like struggling with the, <laughs> that police officer, sure. even though she like blew a hole in the <laughs> in the building. <laughs> that was cheese. That was so I Then she did that stupid like Bruce Lee kick. I was like, oh, my God. I kept thinking of like Django Fett or like <laughs> when, oh, yeah. when he tried to kick Obi-Wan. <laughs> oh, um, but uh, I mean, overall, it was it was an OK first first episode. So I can't wait to see where it goes. And of course, I can't wait to see my boy uh, Charlie Cox uh, down the line. Um, but yeah, uh, take us away. 
yeah guys so if you made it to the end thank you so much we greatly appreciate you um obviously this is the first episode of our she hulk reviews uh we're gonna be doing reviews week by week uh, we cannot wait um if you want you could check out our previous mcu show that we reviewed miss marvel um we reviewed the whole thing for that that was really fun and we have plenty of reviews if you're new to the channel we do reviews all the time um we have a lot of stuff that we're excited for to show you in the future i'm excited for personally doing some reactions to d23 stuff i cannot wait um yeah dylan yeah, well, thank you guys so much for listening to our episode one review of uh, She-Hulk. Uh, if you'd like to hear more reviews from this series, uh, please follow us on whatever platform you're listening to, YouTube, Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Uh, we cover a lot of Marvel and DC content, like Akram said, um, and we also cover a lot of other great uh, movies and shows, too. Uh, we actually passed our 100th episode, I think, and now we're have like 110 videos on our youtube channel so please uh if you have the time check out our older episodes and this is our our fourth season of this podcast so uh but yeah greatly appreciate you guys but uh until next time thank you for having lunch with us see you guys